How far would you go to get your life back? One woman wasn't going to let Parkinson's take her life away. Already at the maximum dose of medication, she had hit the wall. She wasn't going to get better and would likely get worse. So she opted for something called deep brain stimulation, a high risk hope that would change her life. A woman living her life to the fullest. That's how Sandy Reed described herself pre-Parkinson's. A former model turned flight attendant, wife and mother who enjoyed an active lifestyle with her family. But one December day, her world was turned upside down. I went from having a job to being told that the job no longer existed for me because I would have been more of a liability than an asset. At the age of 47, the nightmare began, the same nightmare her mother lived with until her death. I don't think I had enough sympathy for her until I finally found out that I was having the same disease as my mother. Taking up to 50 pills a day, Sandy was at the end of her rope until she found out about a procedure called deep brain stimulation. At first, you may think of the notorious brain scrambling lobotomies of decades ago, but DBS is changing that stigma and may hold huge potential as a therapy for many disorders. Imagine drilling right into the brain to treat things like depression or obsessive compulsive disorder. Right now, the main purpose is helping people like Sandy. A candidate for deep brain stimulation has really must have uh, advanced Parkinson's disease uh, that has reached a degree of medical refractoriness. In other words, the, the medicines have reached the end of the wall for them. In order to work, the patient must be awake through the entire procedure. And then they initiate the operation by drilling through the scalp about, and I think it's about an eighth of an inch, Doctors implant electrodes that will pump steady pulses of electricity to the brain. They're connected to wires that snake from the skull, behind the ear, and down to a battery-run power pack installed in the chest, kind of like a pacemaker. This is where Sandy's surgery took place at Swedish Medical Center in Denver. Typically, deep brain stimulation takes about four to five hours, but in Sandy's case, it was much longer than that. First, she needed more than one CAT scan. Then. Uh, she had a recalcitrant target. It was a little difficult to find. Once they drill into the brain, doctors must find the right spot that controls movement. For Sandy, walking normally and doing <laughs> simple hand movements was difficult, if not impossible. I want you to tell you feel anything, okay, in your left arm or anything like that, okay? Weeks are spent programming the electrode to shape it perfectly for each patient. Two weeks after surgery, I can do anything. This is amazing for me to do. This is one of the hardest things for anyone to do. I can snap my fingers. I could actually go home and hold my daughter. And she's down from around 50 pills a day to just two. It is something that I wish my mom had. It's like a miracle. Sandy will need to be tuned up every six months or so, and the pacemaker will need a new battery every three to four years. She tells me the drilling was very loud, but she felt no pain. Still, it is brain surgery, and there are risks involved. And deep brain stimulation is not a cure. It only helps the symptoms. Finding that sweet spot in the brain that triggers depression, chronic pain, even eating disorders, may be in our future. Kimberly Price, KKTV, 11 News.